Are you actually ready? Let's see. I actually have like a booger. Oh, here. It feels boogery. I said I wasn't gonna do a vlog, but here's a vlog. I can't believe the response my first video got and my channel went from having nine subscribers to now over 50,000. So thanks to everyone who subscribed. Uh, it's motivated me to make some content. First, what I wanna do is intro you guys to my shop space. And for the first time ever, all of my cars are in one spot, which is kind of mind blowing. Uh, this guy. <laughs> I had no idea I had all of these. Because I thought you only had like two to three at a time. You always sell cars and move cars. Who would have thought? You had and all this shit and, and this. <laughs> <laughs> it's bad when you see it all in one spot. But actually a lot of you guys ask me like, oh, how's the NSX? And like, I don't even have that anymore. So I figured it'd be cool to update everyone on like where I do all my crap when I'm not at home and kind of run through all the cars that I currently have in the fleet, show you the place, and then talk a little bit about what we're gonna do on the channel. This is the Shipbox Speakeasy. And it's not actually my shop. I have to give a big shout out to Jason Whipple. Rents out additional space to myself, Ron Baugh, and Sam Dobbin. So we gotta finish this video before Jason shows up and yells at us. So let's get to it. So first car is my most recent build. This is my 1995 BMW M3 and it has a 700 horsepower LS3. You probably watched some of the build content on Hoonigan Project Garage. My intention for this car was actually many years ago. You know, I sold my E46 M3, it was like a street track car and I was like, I wanna build a dedicated track car. I don't want a dual purpose car anymore. I want a dedicated track car. It took many years to build. Many years longer than I thought it would. But this is it, it's a full dedicated track car. My vibe with it was supposed to be like a Team Shermer car, which is like a ring tool car, but done in an American way. So like over the top in every way. Brand new paint. It's this is a BMW color that only came on the Z3M. It's called Evergreen. I painted the entire inside, the roll cage, the body kit, everything the same color, because that's kind of how they do it in Germany. I thought it looked really cool. So I finished building the car earlier this summer, partnered with Race Cars Unlimited, because once Tire Slayer Studios closed, we had to kind of finish our cars elsewhere. So we partnered with Race Cars Unlimited for a place to build the car. And they are actually the people who wired up the car, Jarek from JMP, Motorsport Hardware, started a shop together. Go check out Hooning and Project Garage if you want to catch up on that. But finished the car right before going to Grid Life Laguna Seca. So we did a test day at Button Willow with Beamer World, and went well, and then went straight from there to Laguna Seca, did another two days. The car's been great. It needs a lot of development. It's not fully done as any project car. I want to neaten things up and tidy up some stuff in the engine bay and interior and stuff. But for now, it's pretty good. It's got a Smetting Performance 441 cubic inch LS3. It made 716 crank horsepower. In the car, I choked it down, smaller intake manifold, smaller throttle body, smaller headers and detuned it and Jacob came out, it made 560, 560, and then we turned it down to 520, 500, and uh, it does really well. It puts all the power to the ground, which is like phenomenal. It's got a Holly EFI, MCS two-way remote reservoir damper, it's got a full fire suppression kit, Sicky swap kit, Tremec TKX, twin disc, very expensive build. It's got a Ford 88 rear with a CAS limited slip and G-Force axles from Seems Legit. So it's pretty damn beefy. It's got Beamer World Aero. It's got BBS E88, 18 by 10 and 11 with Yokohama AO52s, stop tech brakes. The Recaro's out of my E46 M3 that I've had for I don't know, like seven years now. Cage kits, I just put some new Lexan windows in it. Yeah, so this is pretty much done. I'm gonna continue to develop this car. It needs a bunch of work, having a clutch problem right now. Uh, I need to delete the booster because it actually is like pretty difficult to break because from like good brake pressure to too much is like razor thin. So we're gonna do a dual master setup, delete the booster, see how that works and continue to develop this car. It's not for any class whatsoever. It's literally just to have fun. I wanted a track car, I could just go out, eat the shit out of, it looks cool and it'll be more excited than driving like a low horsepower S52 powered car. So I love this thing. Speaking of E36s. Oh my God. And then my absolute favorite car, the free 36. This thing, I got this car for free. Some kid on Instagram hit me up and was like, yo, 
I got the Z36, it runs, it drives, it has a five speed. I don't have a title, it doesn't pass smog. I have nowhere to keep it. I gotta get rid of this thing. He's like, do you just want it for free? It looked like a sideshow takeover, like rescue car. Everything broke on it. It was the worst car ever. Literally every time I drove it, something broke. But once I got it dialed mechanically, it was pretty awesome because like you can just jam on this thing. I've done like five track events with it. I've driven it in the yard a ton and it's never given me much issue. So I really like it. It's a 328 IS, it's not an M3, but it's close. It's got the basic of mods. It's got BCs, a wide body kit, K2 Industries, angle kit, welded 391, some NRG seats, it's completely gutted. Saban Harbin hood, it's completely stock. It's got a, this came on this car actually. This is like a super expensive strut bar from, you probably bought this like in the 90s. Other than that, it's like 100% stock. It's got a Mishimoto radiator. Oh, and it's got solid mounts throughout from Condor Speed Shop. But like super, super basic setup. It's really just like a thrasher car, something I could go to ABS and stuff and just like beat around in. Maybe I'll make it a nice one day. I kind of want to turbo it, but. You treat this car so different from how you treat this. I mean, this is storage. So for everyone who doesn't understand this, I have friends, Tony Harmer, I'm looking at you, who hate this car. They hate its existence. It makes them mad because it's so ugly and it's like everything fits like shit. It's just a crummy car, but I love it for that because I like keeping my stuff nice and if I go drifting, like drifting, you just ruin everything. I love this car for the fact that I could just like beat the ever living hell out of it and I don't care. It's got a really nice shifter and a renowned wheel. Chris Miller gave me some uh, yellow inserts for my seats and yellow harnesses and all sorts of other crap. Oh, and this is what makes this car cool to drift people. It's got a roof wing, it's got a drag wing, it's got clear tail lights, and it's got a gold chain. <laughs> yeah, I love this car, man. Oh, my door moldings are gaff tape. Also, bringing back eyelids. Let's go. Question, question. Why'd you make one yellow and the other one because I lost this one. I just found it in the back of my truck. <laughs> Mark II. One of the more recent purchases, I found this car on Craigslist. It was listed for six grand. Original owner, Mark II GTI. For all you guys that don't know, I grew up doing Volkswagens. That's really where I started getting into cars. I, I was really heavy into the Volkswagen scene from like 2006 to 2012. I made most of my friends that I have to this day from Volkswagen. Always wanted a Mark II, specifically a big bumper VR6 swap Mark II. So I found this thing, original owner, 100% stock besides these gross wheels, like pretty much unmolested. You don't come across these in that condition too often. So I was like, let me get it. I just did a couple things on Instagram where I kind of like got it spruced up. So we did a paint correction. We did some coilovers, some RML wheels. We got the bumpers painted. This thing's like pretty nice. Stock interior that's in great shape. 100% stock eight valve with 278,000 miles. So it's Fun. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. I don't really have space for it right now with TSS being gone, this place being a bit above capacity. So I'm not gonna sell it, but I gotta find somewhere for it. I don't really have time to like swap it or do anything I wanna do with it right now. So it's gonna find a home somewhere. My FD. <laughs> So I've had kind of all of the JDM Hero cars. I've had an NSX, I had a Mark IV Supra. I haven't had a GTR yet, but I've always wanted one of these. I never really spent any time in one. And I had a Evo 9 that I traded for this plus cash. Love this thing. This is my favorite 90s like hero car. The FD is so much fun. It's 2,600 pounds because it's an R1 pack. So it's got no sunroof and some lightweight options. And it makes 350 horsepower. This thing absolutely rips. So it's a CYM, which is competition yellow mica. They only made 350 of these ever in this color. They all came in an R1 pack. So no sunroof, black interior, five speed, obviously. This one's got a 99 spec front bumper, lip, rear wing, and tail lights. Authentic Mazda speed hood with these really ugly aero caps that I hate. But I gotta figure out what I wanna do for a hood on that. I actually got this car. This is kind of embarrassing for all you people, built, not bought, purist, whatever you want. I got this car pretty much already set up and I'm actually really happy about that because I got to enjoy it right off the bat. This is gonna be like one of those things where some people hate me, some love it, but I I feel like a stock FD isn't gonna be that fun. I don't know if I would uh, if I would even want a stock FD. The way this thing's set up is perfect. Did you drive Ron's when it was stock? No, never. This man is uncultured and doesn't know anything about RX-7s. Me? Yes, 
All right, pop the hood, pop the hood. Having had an NSX and also the crap, FD stock is gonna be underwhelming. It's gonna be kind of slow. It's gonna be sort of lethargic. It's not gonna be that great. I'm a ricer, I want more stuff. So I'd have to mod it anyways. This thing's got 100% bone stock crate 13B REW with low miles. It's got a Turbolone 8374 EFR kit on it, which is great. It's internal wastegate, internal blow valve. It's twin scroll, spools super quick. This thing makes all the torque at like 3200 rpm it's got haltech elite 1500 front mount a radiator fuel system like all the basic other stuff it's deleted all the crap under the intake manifold it's got an exetti twin a 4.4 limited slip olins te's like a bunch of feed stuff so this thing's like super set up i really i love this car i've been having a lot of fun with it my only gripe is that like for YouTube or for content? Really nothing to do to it. I want to put some like body parts on it and change the wheels, but I'm sort of in the middle of like, should I do a street port? Cause I have another 13B with low compression or should I do a three rotor because they sound really cool? Do I sell it and build something else? So Rob I Dom. I already talked to Rob Dom and I said, I asked him if we would build a motor together and he said he's down. It could be cool. I can't be baller like her and do a four rotor, but a three or even just like a, a nice little street port on a two. But the problem is, is this thing, the power is fine. I don't really want to make much more power and it drives great. I just sort of want the chop. How stupid is that? It's not. It's kind of dumb. No, it's not. To build a motor and swap it just so it idles worse is kind of stupid. That's but. Zach's life. Like I said, it's dumb. <laughs> I love you, Zach, but you know, you're ridiculous. <laughs> This is the daily F80 M3. I actually bought this from Mark Arsenal. I've spent some time getting it kind of dialed. It's filthy right now. It's raining. It's been raining. So I love this thing more than I thought I would too. So we bought this just as a daily. I didn't expect to like it at all. It was just a good deal. And I was like, eh, I'll drive it for a bit and sell it. I've had this for almost a year now. I'm not sick of it at all. It sounds Terrific, worst sounding car ever. I did an equal length mid pipe from Active Auto Work. It sounds better, but they're still just terrible sounding cars. This thing's cool. It's a good spec suspension. We got some staggered forged rotiforms on there with 265s and 305s out back. And some carbon fiber aero from uh, my friends over at Evolve. It's mostly stock though. God, what? You gotta do two pops. CSF intercooler, cause the factory ones actually fail really often. And the thing that's crazy, it's an air to water from factory and it fails internally. So it leaks into your motor. What? Fucking stupid. Carbon fiber charge pipes, carbon intakes from each inventory. This is actually stock, which is kind of cool. I have a crank hub for it, which is like the only thing that goes wrong on these cars. Debating doing a crank hub and tuning it because you could make like 600 wheel on these so easily, but it's pretty quick as is. I really like it. I mean, it comes in a carbon fiber roof from the factory on a sedan and you could fit a 305 on it. Like this car is sick. And it's probably almost as fast as this thing in a straight line. And it has room for chance. <laughs> Lastly, <laughs> fix my lip. This is it, man. This is my ultimate dream car. Hey, you're gonna be in all this if you are. Uh... Oh, sorry. No, you're good. You're good if you want to yeah. chill there, but I know you're gonna hate it. I'm leaving you in the video okay. for sure. That's Amy. She doesn't like being on camera ever, but uh, she's going to warm up to it. Yeah, you could sit there and hang out. We're going to teach her how to drift, and that's going to be Amy getting out of her shell. Take her to ABS and teach her how to do donuts. I'm so stoked for that yeah, day. 100%. Slider in that thing, though. <laughs> so this is my ultimate, ultimate, ultimate dream car that I somehow managed to get. It's a 997.2 GT3 RS. This car is super special to me, and I think it's the car that actually broke me. You guys know I don't keep anything for a long time. Get stuff, I either build it, mod it, have fun with it, and then get rid of it. It was kind of all just to get to this, and I never thought I would get there. I had a 997 GT3 that was like, I'm at the top, baby. And then I traded that plus a little bit of cash for this in unit. It's a gray, black on red GT3 RS with like the sickest spec ever. It's got carbon buckets. It's got all red deviated stitching. And this thing literally has over a hundred thousand dollars in mods. So back in the day in 2012, this car was built by GMG Racing. It's got a world challenge package on it. It came with JRZ three ways, RS pros. It's got a roll bar. It's got an OS Gick and diff, all the suspension kinematics, upgraded brakes, headers, exhaust 
all that crap. And then I did a Dundon D4 setup on it, which is an intake manifold, throttle body, headers, exhaust, and a tune. So it makes 465 wheel horsepower. It is the coolest car ever to me. It's the last GT3 RS ever made in a manual. Um, they only made about 640 of these uh, for the US. It's a really rare car. It's a really special car to me. It's something I never thought I would have owned. Every single time I think about selling it because the values of these have gone through the roof. I can't bring myself to sell it because every time I drive it or I just like look at it, I'm like, oh my God, it's cool. Was this the car that ended up making you start driver's era? I mean, this car to me is the pinnacle of like a driver's car. It's the last of the cars that like didn't have too much, but had everything you want. A lot of the cars from the 90s are sort of like, I'm gonna say it, they're underwhelming stock. They're not that great. They need a lot of mods to make them into something good. This car was like, it had enough technology where it was super fast, it was super visceral, great steering. The gearbox is like borderline unbearable to drive. The clutch is heavy. It doesn't go into gear unless you really put it into gear. It's almost like driving a dog box. It has lightweight carpeting, less sound deadening, lightweight glass. It's loud as can be. It vibrates, the clutch chatters from the factory. It sounds like the thing's falling apart. It's amazing. It's so cool that that came in a factory car. And then the next one, the 991 is like super smart. It's got all sorts of traction controls. It's got a dual clutch transmission. It's got rear wheel steering. It's got direct port injection. It's got all this stuff. Apple CarPlay, all this shit jumped into the next level of like all the new cars we have today, which is like tons of technology and driving assists and creature comforts and all that crap. This is pure driving. Absolutely love that. To me, this is the ultimate expression of driving emotion, which sounds really corny, but like you drive that thing and you're like, holy f my mind's blown. That's it. Oh, then we got the, we got the oh, forgot all about them outside. Big Raptor guy, number five. I've had five of these. Uh, this is my first gen two. We don't have the best relationship. Goes to the dealer a lot. Has lots and lots of quirks. Great truck. This is the tow rig, the other daily. It's got Fox 3.0 coilovers with the remote resis. Some KMC wheels, Yokohama tires. Yeah, it's just the tow rig. It gets us to events, it tows the cars, and uh, you could do some off-roading stuff on it. Spends most of its time at the dealership. Probably gonna sell this thing soon. I don't know what I'll get next. Probably another Gen 1, or maybe, I don't know, go back to Toyota and then regret it and get another Raptor. That's it, so this is the shop. I'll show you around, let's show you some other cars real quick. Some things you'll probably see on the channel eventually. Ron Ba, you guys know, might have seen him. He's been on Hooning in a bunch. It's his Mustang, he's got a 351 uh, Windsor in it. Jason Whipple's got two Scirocco's. This one's got a crazy eight valve NA race motor with ITBs. This one's got a 16 valve turbo that he's swapping to an eight valve. This car he actually bought to spite Brian Scotto. Dude, you gotta look at the plate. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> he literally, so that's a op Audi uh, RS2 or an S2. I know nothing about Audis, but it's a whole opt kit and it's the same car, the CQ that Brian has uh, that never finished. So he bought that car. He called it Spike Car, inspired by Larry David's Spite Store. And then he never drove it. Anything's gonna sell it. Then he's got a full opt built Mark III that he just got done restoring. This thing's got a two nine liter opt engine. And then his 993 is absolutely beautiful. It's got a full roof kit on it. That thing's awesome. Awesome. And then he has like a ton of other cars too. I don't even know where they are. So that's the shop, Shipbox Speakeasy. Uh, we'll probably use this place a bit to do some content. This channel, I think what we're gonna do is we'll do a weekly vlog, same day, every week. I don't know what day that is yet, but we'll decide. It's not all gonna be car builds. I think it'll just be a lot of like things that we're doing. I try to get some of the guys and the team back on here. So you'll see some familiar faces like this friggin' nerd. <laughs> we'll get Ron out here. We'll get Zach on the channel. We'll go friggin' bother Rock Brian whenever he could make time to do stuff. We'll just kind of make some fun content each week and see where it goes. Feel like it would be stupid to not do a vlog, being that like all of you guys came here for no reason. And I appreciate that so much that it's like, I'm not just gonna leave this channel idle and like put nothing up. I'd rather put some effort into it for you guys. I really appreciate the support that you guys have given me. Leaving Hoonigan was really, really difficult for me. And I was super terrified to do it after seeing the crazy support that you guys have had uh, from those posts and that video. I figured it'd be super fun, do a vlog. I mean, we've been doing this thing for years and I have a good time doing it. It'll be a great excuse to get all my friends out and actually like do stuff and <laughs> off with cars. So that'll be the channel. Let us know what you want to see on here, whether it's like car builds, features, drives, going to events, or doing like a studio show where we could just talk about crap. I don't know, we'll figure it out. We'll kind of like build it with you guys. I don't have any merch or anything to buy. I know a lot of people you have been 
asking like, do you have some merch? Can we support you in that way? Not yet. We'll launch something in the future. We have some plans with Drivers Era. So if you wanna go follow that, check it out. There's nothing there yet. That'll launch eventually and we'll do some merch there. I don't want anyone wearing Vintra shirts or like a picture of my bald head or maybe we'll make bald caps. Dude, make a bald cap that you could wear. Hey guys, this is Jason. This is Shop Dad. He lets us in here to do stuff. I used to have a shop. Three, four, no, five. No, no, these aren't staying here. Hold They're on. all leaving Rent's today. Going up. They're but, all leaving but, today. But they all run. You don't have to push any one of that them. Is incredible. Oh, I leave all of these here, or you get to keep that. All right, Ron, you're going. <laughs> <laughs>